Today we're going to be making some grass in Unity. This will be the kind of grass that we're going to be making. As you can see, it can be very, very tightly packed. That's what I wanted for this specific hill, to have a very thick grass. You can have it a little bit less thick, if that is what you prefer. Fair warning, uh, this amount of grass is kind of pushing my GPU, uh, which is a right around average GPU, to maybe not being so happy. So don't push it any further than this. But without further ado, let's get into making some cartoony looking grass. So the first thing we do is we go into Blender and we make a grass asset. We start by adding a plane mesh and rotating that around so that it's facing upward. Then in edit mode, we make it go up and we line it up with the Z value for zero. Then we scale it down in the X value. We take the top two vertices and take them down a little bit. And from there, we just use extrude, 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 and extrude. Then coming up here, we turn on proportional editing, pressing S to scale, and we scale this right down to being a blade of grass. Then we can select any vertices we want with proportional editing still on. We can scroll in and out. My scroll wheel is a little fricked up at the moment to change the shape of our blade of grass. And that'll be our first blade of grass. So we can right click and shade smooth to make it a little bit more smooth. Then we can just simply shift D to duplicate it and rotate one around the Z axis and do that a couple more times. Then we can move them around a little bit so that they're not overlapping so much and there's a little bit of randomness. And then going into edit mode, we can just change the shape of every single blade a tiny little bit so that they're not exactly the same as every other blade. Now that we have all that, we can check if all of the blades are at Z equals zero. If you want to have this Blender and Unity project for yourself to try around whatever you want in, they are down below in the description to my Patreon, where you can download them if you want to. Anyway, so now that we have all of them lined up properly, we can select them all and we can press Ctrl and J to join them together. Then we right-click them and we set the origin to the 3D cursor. That way the pivot point is around the bottom. Now, because we're doing this for Unity, we need to do a little bit of a weird thing. And that's because Blender and Unity don't use the same rules for which axis does what. So in Blender, as we can see, the up and down axis is the Z axis. In Unity, the up and down is the Y axis, the green one. So what we'll do is we'll rotate this around the X axis by 90 degrees. And this way, when we import this into Unity, it will actually be facing up. It's a little bit weird. It's a little bit annoying. I wish Unity had a better solution for this, but to my knowledge, it does not. In the materials, we should also not forget to give this material. Otherwise, Unity will not understand that this thing has a material slot. And the last thing we're gonna do in Blender is we're gonna come over here to the UV editing tab. We're going to select every vertice. We're going to press U and Smart UV Project. Set the angle limit to something a little bit higher, something like 130, to make sure that all the blades of grass don't get cut up. Now, we wanna make sure that the white parts of all the blades of grass are at the bottom of the UV maps and the thinner parts are at the top. And for the most part, that seems to be the case, except for this one over here, this one, and potentially this one. So what we'll do is we turn off the proportional editing, and then we just select them one at a time, just one vertice, press L to select the entire island, press R to rotate it by 180 degrees. You can just type in 180. And we do that for every island that is upside down. There are certainly ways that you can use in Unity that just skip this UV unwrapping step altogether. I'm going to skip over that for the time being uh, because in my experience, there's quite a lot that can go wrong there. Now, in Unity, we can import that. And as we can see, 
there's a little bit of confusion here because it understands that it needs to rotate this because it's from blender but as you can see if we don't rotate this around uh, it's facing up and the way we're going to be placing these is not going to take that into account and it's a little annoying how that works but bear with me here so we have this one gigantic blade of grass uh, but it's white and we can see through parts of it and there's a lot of things that you can panic about don't panic we're going to work through that so first things first we're going to make a new shader graph hdrp you can also do this in urp i'm using hdrp but it will work in both and we're going to go for a lit shader graph and we'll just call that grass double clicking that opens up the graph editor here and here we're going to add a couple of values that we can use so we're going to add a color which we'll call color a and then we're going to add a color b as well to match that we're going to drag both of these in and these are going to go into a loop node so color a is going to go into value a of the loop node and then color b is going to go into value b of the loop node and we'll give these some grass looking values so we can make this one a dark green make sure that the alpha is set to 255 so that it's not see-through and then color b we're actually going to give a lighter grass color the exact colors may vary depending on what you want to do which is exactly why we're making these exposed variables every material you make with this shader is going to have its own set of colors that's going to go into the base color and then we're going to make a little bit of a setup to get this t value that loops between color a and color b to do that we're going to start by adding a node uh, for our uvs this is where the uv map we just made comes in and you'll see that this is a blend of colors but really what's happening is if we put this into a split node you can see it's got a red a green a blue and an alpha channel the blue and the alpha you can ignore those are just one solid value but if we put the red into the t here you'll be able to see that it's going from dark to light in the direction left to right if you use the green channel instead that'll do the same but up to down and now we've made our own custom gradient that we can use to color our grass so let's save this asset here this shader graph and use that shader to now make ourselves a new material let's call that grass as well and we're going to be using the shader we just made to make this material as you can see we have two exposed colors here so dragging that onto our grass here we can see hey we've got a gradient here which this is mostly supposed to emulate shadow or ambient occlusion without actually having to calculate it we still can see through some of the blades of grass though and that's because uh the back face is not rendering usually in a game you don't want back faces to render uh, in this case because they're all 2d planes uh, we do want that so we simply go into the material and find this double-sided checkbox and turn it on now we can see it's all being rendered properly except these faces are casting shadows on themselves right because we've got this front face here and this back face isn't getting any light and that just looks a little ugly especially if we like get a lot of these grass pieces very close together which is what we're going to have in the end uh this very quickly ends up looking just a little too dark and it doesn't pop there's a very easy fix for that though coming back into our shader editor here we're going to just put these colors to the side real quick and we're going to add a new node and we'll get a normal unpack node if you've worked with normals before normal maps this is slightly different we're going to set the y value here to being one so that this square is entirely green and that is going to go into the normal tangent space so what this is doing is rather than taking the face orientation or using a normal map to decide where a face should be looking for its direction of up that's what a normal is it's always just checking 
directly above it. No matter what orientation the actual face is, it's going to be lit from directly above it. This makes it so that the back faces are actually getting lit equally to the front faces, as well as just generally having this more poppy, cartoony feel to the grass. And that's it for the shader itself. Now we're going to apply that to a terrain. So let's delete this because this is this was just for previewing, really. And in the imported FBX here, we'll quickly go over to the materials and put in our newly made grass material. And you can see that updating right here. Then we're going to make a new 3D object. That's going to be a terrain. It's going to be very, very big by default. A little too big, as a matter of fact. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here into the terrain width and length. And we're going to just set that to 100 to make it a little bit smaller. Then we're going to go into the Paint Details tab here, and we're going to Edit Details, Add Detail Mesh, and we'll add our Grass Mesh in here. We can change the maximum and minimum width and the height. For right now, we're going to leave those as it is, but we can change those around uh, as we like later. Very important, because we're going to be rendering a lot of these things, uh, GPU instancing needs to be on. If you have this off, it's going to actually instantiate every single blade of grass on the CPU and your frame rate is going to tank. So let's add this grass now. And with a nice brush, I like this one. We can set the brush size to whatever we want and we can start painting in our grass. And you'll be able to see that they're positively tiny in here. So now we can go back into here and edit this detail. And maybe we want to set this to be uh, a little bit bigger, right? So let's make these all bigger by a factor of 10. And suddenly we see a little bit more grass. And of course, we can paint these to be very, very thick. And if you hold control while painting, you actually remove grass or whatever detail you're painting in. This doesn't look too bad. From above, of course, you can see quite a lot of what I refer to as bold spots. But if you're just playing through it on more or less eye level, you get away with having pretty sparse grass. So we can paint in quite a bit of this grass here. And if we decide that ah, actually this is maybe a little bit too dark, we can just change around the colors that we're using and we can actually see it change around in real time. Maybe this needs to be a little bit less blue and just very vibrant green to give that very healthy grass look and just like that we have an entire field of grass in unity it's really as easy as that of course the shape of the grass and the colors of the grass will be different depending on whatever you personally prefer but this is a very easy technique to make very good looking grass that doesn't cast shadows on itself it looks good in a cartoony setting, and frankly, you could even get away with using this in a more realistic setting. Maybe make the blades of grass a little thinner, and add a few more of them if you're going for some more realism. But in most situations, this will do relatively well. So, again, if you want this Unity project, and I'll also add in the Blender project for this one to play around with, and maybe like take a better look at this shader graph, even though it's a really, really easy shader graph, there will be a link down below in the description to my Patreon where you can download both of the projects and play around with them. And thanks to my patrons, you can see them on screen right now, and a special thank you to my Cave Digger tier Patreon, Syntax.